One of the things you said to me back then, or since then, was I feel like a box of chocolates that hasn't been enjoyed. Really? Yes. <laughs> and that really stuck with me, meaning to me, all of your beautiful talents, you haven't really shared with the world, actually. Yeah. So, um, today, can I ask you to recite a poem to us? Oh, I didn't bring them. Ah, I don't wish. But I think what we should do is we should publish one of your poems on on the George's Instagram or on mine and tag them because they are really beautiful. Thanks. So Sue, you are have the prestigious reputation that as being the only artist who's been purchased by the hotel owner on our exhibition this month. So yeah. Not only one but three of your paintings. So congratulations for that. <laughs> It's such good news. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. So you tell me, um, you, you live in near to Hermanus now. Yeah. And you're building a home out there. Yeah. How do you manage to paint while living almost on a building site? Well, the reason that I'm doing such small paintings is, well, that's the reason. Because yeah. Because, you know, you, can, you don't need a lot of space to do something small. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I used to paint enormous paintings, but yeah, you absolutely. need a lot of space, and I make a lot of mess when I paint, yeah. so I just thought I'm going to try the little ones, yeah. and, and so, but I really enjoy them. So. Yeah, they're beautiful, yeah. absolutely beautiful. So I actually do ask a lot of people that come to the show, to the exhibition, which their favourite artists are, and people like Kevin Gadd, like one of our foremost architects in Cape Town, and a lot of other people have actually pointed your work out as being their yeah. absolute favourite. Yeah. So I think that's a feather in your cap for sure. Yeah. I did have a tinge of envy when I actually was <laughs> hoping they would uh, say mine was, but they preferred me. But um, yeah, well done for that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So, so you kind of like. Put your own art career on the back burner mm. in your life, mm. it seems, because I've seen where you did it long ago. I actually put you to own one of your paintings, which you gifted me some time back. Um, do you feel now you're ready to really let the world see what you can do? Yeah, I think that, you know, for me, it's been a process of trying to understand what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it just takes time to. I did a lot of experimenting, and, yeah. and I will still do that. I like yeah. to try different mediums and different ideas, but I just feel like, yeah, what I'm trying to do now, what I am doing, is working more from what's <coughs> in me, yes, yeah. rather than setting a goal and trying to make something happen yeah. from out there. Yeah, yeah. And that, for me, has made the difference, where because I feel like what I'm working on now is really just me. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm not trying to do anything, I'm yeah. just doing it. And yeah. if it works, it works, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. And obviously that's a much easier way to do it because you don't have any pressure. It's just... Yeah. Um, it's difficult though because, yeah. you know, one can't make art without... You know, you know one ha you have to sell your art in yeah. order to actually get the momentum going yeah. and it's not cheap to... Yeah. create art, yeah. you know, one can use upcycling, but really ideally if you want to choose your materials, it can end up being yeah. expensive exercise. Yeah. So, um, I'm hoping and I'm looking forward to what we chatted about on the way here, mm -hmm. is perhaps seeing your work being printed as well. Yeah. I think it would work exceptionally well in the print form. Yeah. And seeing your name become more recognised, yeah. yeah. I think you, you haven't done justice to yourself and um, I mean I look at some of the talents 
with some of the art that's being sold, you might have seen my post on Facebook yesterday. 280,000 rand for something in yeah. the gallery in Joburg. Beautiful work. Um, but, you know, why shouldn't why shouldn't we be there? Yeah. You know, yeah. so. But I do think that what I've noticed over the years is that, that it's the artist that really believes they're an artist, yeah. it behaves like an artist. Yes. It doesn't really matter what they're making. It does yeah. to some degree, mm -hmm. but it's it's really more the belief in the fact that they're an artist yes. that gives them that momentum. Yes. And for me, I never really made that connection. Yeah. You know, I always, always used to marvel at artists who just had so much... I mean, it's not really belief in themselves, but it's like a... It's a decision that they've made. Yeah. They want to be an artist, even if they don't have a lot of skill. They are an artist, that, and they do their work, and, and they, they do, yeah. and they make money. Yeah. yeah. And I think I also had a lot of guilt about being an artist because notoriously one doesn't earn a lot of money and blah yeah. blah blah. So I was always half focused on something else as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like fully and committed. being a mom. Yeah. And all of that. Yeah. I know. I get it completely. Yeah, I was always actually just working to survive. Yeah. You know, if I hadn't had to work to survive, I probably would have started doing art yeah. at a much younger age. Yeah. And Sue, one of your other amazing qualities and skills is your brilliant chefing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sue has, or well, used to have, and will again, a little group of people that used to come to her house and eat her incredible pasta. She's a brilliant cook, bakes the best cakes I've ever had. And um, yeah, so since Sue's moved out to the Manus Wave, unfortunately we're deprived of that now. But I'm looking forward to going back to doing that yeah. with you and coming to visit you out there and cooking with you again. It's a wonderful table. Yeah. It's stunning, stunning. Yeah. I've got some photos. Yeah. What I loved about those dinners is that we kind of worked on it together. You know, it was like teamwork. It was teamwork and yeah. everybody had something to do. And we, it's like, for me, it's like a family. It was so you know? family, it's such a family vibe. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really We nice. just kind of, yeah. yeah. So, so you grew up in Joburg, mm -hmm. same as me. Yeah. And um, we went to the same school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't. We went to the same school. I can't yeah. forget that. Yeah. But, um, and then you, you you went and lived on a small home, on a farm. We went to in the Lily Karoo. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was quite a big property. And um, we had a lot of fruit trees and all that kind of stuff. We had the horse. And but no painting. I was painting, um, but not, you know, professionally. I was just painting. I had a little corner in the house where I paint, but not for as a career. Yeah. So Sue, those poems that you sent me, you emailed me, I found myself very emotionally um, affected by them, especially the one about the farmer. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, what do you think about publishing them with your art in a small book, like perhaps if we could find a publishing house that yeah. would, would actually look at that? Because that, and, and the one about your mother, I mean, fantastic, you know, really yeah. brilliant. It is, it is on my agenda to do that, maybe just to have a couple of pages where there's a simple sort of, either a photograph or a painting that sort of ties in. Yeah. Well, you, you're depriving the world, the way I see it, is you're depriving the world of your amazing talent by hoarding it all to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding it under a bushel. Yes. So you promise me you're going to see more of all of this. Yes, yeah, I do. Well, is there anything else you'd like to say about your work and about your goals in the art I'm not a person who has goals. I'm, I just don't, I don't even know what I'm going to do tomorrow. So mm. I just think about, you know, I, I really do just try to move forward from where I am rather than try to get somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm just going to keep doing it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it would be lovely to be able to do it more often, to pay more often, and to create more often, and to have that sustained. I would love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with having goals. Maybe it's, maybe it's time to start setting some, because I have goals for you. 
Okay, well, you can have the goals. I have intentions. I intend yeah. to have your work really show. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's beautiful. It's, uh, it's not political. It's not... Uh, it doesn't... It's not disruptive. It's, it's actually very easy on the eye. Yeah. To look with. And your techniques are beautiful. And something... <laughs> And quite a few of them uh, get this feeling of almost like an oriental piece of silk. Okay. You know, or a beautiful Asian scene. Yeah. Very much, I don't know whether you have that influence in your life, but it's oh, really. Easy. I mean, what I try to do with the painting is I try to paint a sense of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that when a person looks at it, they can experience what I experienced. In painting. in painting it. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And, and I try also, I love to paint nature because we are nature. Mm. And we're so inundated with everything that's not good. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just a little reminder for, for us to just connect with that. Yeah. And connect with our souls and, yeah, just find some kind of peace. Yeah. So there's another part of your you that not everyone knows about and you have got um, very strong feelings and you're actually I think a representative of a movement called the OHN, <coughs> the Organization for Humanities Movement, yeah. which is a phenomenal movement. Would you like to tell the viewers a little bit about OHN? I think this is a great opportunity to maybe get more people to know what you do. Yeah. Well, the, it's the Organic Humanity Movement, and they are a movement that is registered as a political party because the idea of the movement is to change the way that we live, change the way that the, that we operate, the way that the country operates, mm -hmm. to bring us all closer to being human, yes. and to um, creating a system whether it's in your own life, or whether it's in your family, or whether it's in your community, or in your country, yes. where people care about each other, where you, you, you take care of the weakest, where you are self-reliant, basically, so yeah, you don't get um, dependent on the government, or other people, or um, even corporations. Yeah for your sustenance. So you're you farming, you yeah. growing your own food, yeah. and you're looking after your community. Yeah. yeah. Making those community connections, and so, because the more independent we can become as individuals, mm -hmm. um, the more, the less control people have over us. And how many people are in this movement? I mean, you must have an idea. I know you've got uh, branches all over the country. Yeah, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands. It's just that, it's not a movement, it's, it's not like a political movement where it's about politics, it's yes. about how to be a human how being, to live. how to remember who we are. Yeah. And so there are people in all communities all over the country mm. who, who belong and who are... It's, it's like when you go to vote for a party, you make your cross and then you say, okay, you've got to go and fix this. Yeah. That's what voting is. Mm. But the organic humanity movement is about being involved. Yeah. About saying, what can I do? How can I make a difference in my family, mm -hmm. in my community? And so, it's a much deeper thing. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I do follow um, Lauren, Lauren Evanthea, on uh, Telegram, and I find a very, very uh, wonderful way of, of being and the values. Yeah, the it's values. about values and principles. Yeah. Kind of. Because if you rule, or not rule, but if you operate a country or a business or a family or a school yeah. with values and principles, mm. you don't need policies, mm. you don't even need that much governance, you don't even need that many laws. Yeah. Because people take personal responsibility. Yeah. Beautiful. You know? yeah, that's um, wonderful. So I'm getting all the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, It's good. I hope we'll get more people voting for you. Good. Yeah. Thanks so much, Sue. Yeah. It's been lovely chatting. Lovely and uh, I look forward to seeing you when we're having our the party in Mid September. Mid September, yeah. September. yeah. Maybe we can twist Terence's arm to give you a room again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>